Hi, everyone, and welcome back. In this episode, we'll see the famed Antler Arch, the Len Lease Monument, the Golden Heart Park, and the Morris Thompson Cultural Center, where we'll learn all about the Flying Bishop of Alaska. One of the must-sees in downtown Fairbanks is the Antler Arch Gateway. Located at just a short walk from the Morris Thompson Visitors and Cultural Center on the Chena River, the arch is made up of more than 100 moose and caribou antlers that were collected from all over interior Alaska. It's an impressive structure that is very Alaskana. Ten sets of antlers came from the village of Hoslia. 15 sets of antlers were collected from Fort Yukon. Additional antlers are from Fairbanks, North Pole, Dot Lake, the Minto Flats, Toke, Koyatuk, Delta, Northway, and the Tanana Flats. One of the largest sets came from Sean Gover, a young boy from Nikolai who got the moose antlers on his first hunt. Local artist and cabin builder Sandy Jamison oversaw the installation of the antlers. The arch was completed in 2010. Completed in 1986, Golden Heart Plaza is located where the center of gold rush activity occurred. The decorative concrete plaza features a ramp that leads directly down to the river, the literal and figurative heart of Fairbanks. The plaza boasts more than 70 bronze plaques that act as a permanent register of names of interior Alaska families, organizations, and institutions, along with historical vignettes. The plaza's central feature is a fountain statue, Unknown First Family, by Malcolm Alexander. Standing 18 feet high with water cascading over it into a surrounding pool, the statue has been dedicated to all the Alaska families of the past, present, and future. Fairbanksans and tourists alike have congregated at Golden Heart Plaza to celebrate holiday, festivals, and other quirky Alaskan events. From the 25th anniversary of statehood celebration to the tired iron antique snowmobile race, the plaza is a focal point in the life of the community. The plaza embraces Alaska's seasonal patterns by programming events suited to climatic extremes. In the summer, Golden Heart Plaza comes alive with flowers and an open-air concert series, while a seasonal boat dock provides access to the river. In the winter, the plaza is strung with twinkling white lights and offers a perfect vantage point for watching events like the Yukon Quest International Sled Dog Race or winter fireworks on the frozen Chena River. In the early days of World War II, Allied nations found themselves short on materials and supplies that were needed to keep fighting. This need resulted in the creation of the Len Lease Policy, which saw the United States end their neutrality to support Allied efforts. To help the Soviet Union on the Eastern Front, nearly 8,000 aircraft and numerous other supplies went up from the lower 48 and eventually into the war. The Lend-Lease Monument commemorates the flights of these American planes from the continental United States along the Alaska-Siberia Airway and is illustrated as one of the bronze panels that's located on the monument. The large number of aircraft handed over to the Soviets at Fairbanks were then flown across the Bering Sea and into Siberia before eventually joining war efforts on multiple Russian battlefronts. Much of the Alaska-Siberia Airway route lay over remote and roadless wilderness, which forced pilots to make their way in stages from the safety of one quickly built fort to the next. 
Many pilots, including ones from the Women's Airline Service Pilots, or WASP, flew airplanes up to Fairbanks to be part of this effort. The heroism on the part of American and Soviet pilots to participate in the endeavor is celebrated in the two figures that represent pilots from both nations. We walked on over to the Morris Thompson Cultural and Visitor Center. It's a place for gathering, discovery, education, and celebration made possible by a cross-organizational, multicultural partnership built on the values lived by the late Morris Thompson. Morris Thompson was a Cayucan Athabascan born in 1939 in the nearby village of Tanana. The son of Warren Thompson from Indiana and Alice Thompson from Tanana, as a child, he loves reading and studying. He would sometimes tell people he couldn't go outside to play because he was too busy reading and preparing to be a big man someday. That's how he earned the nickname Big, and it stuck. He grew up in Canada, so he went away to school at Mount Edgecombe, later majored in civil engineering at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. He didn't work long as an engineer before his success as a campaign volunteer attracted Governor Walter Hickel's attention and Morris became a trusted political appointee for the governor. When Hickel was named Secretary of the Interior under President Nixon, he brought Morris to Washington as a special assistant for the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Morris became Bureau of Indian Affairs Director in Juneau, Alaska in 1970 and was named Commissioner of the entire BIA when he was only 34 years old. William Gordon arrived in Alaska in 1943 as a young Episcopal deacon. Within months of his arrival, he was ordained into the priesthood and married to Shirley Lewis, a young lady he met on the steamer coming north. Over the next five years, he lived in Point Hope and traveled 6,000 miles by dog team, learning lessons from the Arctic and her people that shaped the rest of his life. At the age of 29, while camped in an abandoned igloo somewhere between Kevalina and Point Hope, he was selected as the third Episcopal Bishop of Alaska. He moved his family to Fairbanks in 1948 and began his statewide ministry. After two summers traveling by riverboat to visit churches, he learned to fly and took to the air. Hence, he became known as the Flying Bishop. Join us as we return to Florida, as we pass through the Yukon Territory, Skagway and Hyder, Alaska, Canada's beautiful British Columbia and across the United States on our return trip home on Jane and Steve's Golden Anniversary Adventure.